Hi, this is Mike Leboff for MediaAndEducation.com. Today we will take a brief look at the classroom of the future. What will it be like? Judging by recent classrooms being built across the country, it may be possible to identify several trends that can help us answer this question. It would have multiple electronic display surfaces. Some would be large projected images using dedicated ceiling mounted projectors. The images projected onto these screens would be used to engage larger groups of students or the entire class. Other displays would be wall mounted flat panels 42 inches or larger, the orientation of which could be shifted from side to side. Groups of students would utilize these screens to display computer based materials within smaller work groups. A good portion of the perimeter walls would be made up of writing surfaces. They might even be magnetic to enable them to be used as tack surfaces. Traditional corkboard surfaces would also be available for the display of longer duration wall mounted projects. The furniture would be sturdy but lightweight movable and reconfigurable to accommodate work groups of various sizes. Chairs would be comfortable and on wheels. And the room would be sized to allow for comfortable circulation and a certain messiness, even chaos, during the classroom project activities. The teacher's workstation would be mobile and small. Most of the time instructors would be wanderers, listening in on discussions, moving around the room and guiding students forward. The floor would be covered with a sturdy carpet material and designed with a grid of power and data receptacles. Though maintenance of these floor boxes might be more demanding, the trade-off for flexibility is well worth it. Though the entire building would have wireless network connectivity, an extensive array of hardwired outlets would be furnished to provide connectivity to support ultra-high bandwidth multimedia applications. Wall outlets would provide power for recharging purposes as well as to support various portable equipment. The lighting would be zoned such that fixtures closest to the projection screen could be turned off independently of the other fixtures. Indirect lighting would provide a comfortably soft illumination and be daylight balanced. Room sensors would automatically extinguish lighting when the room was not occupied. The HVAC or heating, ventilating and air conditioning system would be quiet and independently controlled from within each room. The acoustics of the room would ensure that the space would not be too hard or reverberant and would be well isolated to ensure that exciting or overly enthusiastic learning activities in one room would not disturb adjacent classes. Though the school might not assign laptops, one to a student, a mobile card of laptops would be available to support computer-aided learning activities when necessary. There would be fixed work surfaces along a portion of the periphery of the room. On them, students would assemble projects, use the document camera, printer, or desktop computers dedicated to the room, laminating machines, or other equipment used to support the production of multimedia materials. Remote control of the room's audiovisual technology would be controlled from a wireless tablet computer. Using it, teacher or student could surf the web, access network multimedia, control display devices, etc. All of the audiovisual equipment would be IP connected and allow for central monitoring, control, and remote technical support. This would, among other things, help to limit the headcount needed to support advanced technology. The room would be designed with an enclosed equipment niche which would provide access to the technology when necessary and hidden from view when appropriate. Rear access to the equipment would facilitate periodic maintenance and servicing. The room would have a dedicated PC, DVD player, provisions to receive cable and satellite as well as internet based video programming and the display systems would have connectivity for personal video devices such as the video iPod. Ceiling speakers would be used to provide the sound from any recorded or live program material. Dedicated video origination capabilities consisting of cameras located in the front and rear of the room would be used to capture classroom activities. These activities could be recorded digitally for later viewing, distributed anywhere in the building, 
or use for distance learning activities. Also, video conferencing would allow collaboration with field teams and remotely located groups. Guest lecturers would also participate this way as well. All the classrooms would be interconnected so that any room could serve as an overflow area for any other space. The degree to which permanent storage was provided within the room would depend on the particular requirements of classes being held there. Hopefully storage would not be the forgotten trade-off in the inevitable building value engineering exercises that accompany every new building project. There can and should be no single vision of the classroom of the future. The ideas here will get you started. And remember, future flexibility for any classroom lies not within the specific technology or equipment choices made, but in the basic room geometry, sizing, juxtaposition, and base building infrastructure, which includes power, conduit, connectivity pathways, etc., provided in the bricks and mortar of the building. This has been Mike Leboff. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, please go to mediainducation.com.